Good day, Johnny Douglas with Georgia Softworks here. I'm going to do a demonstration of downloading Georgia Softworks Universal Terminal Server on a 2012 R2 server and going through some configuration. First, we'll go to Downloads. We're going to use the 64-bit version. I'm going to just create a folder. Call it GSW. I open the folder location, copy it. We'll just close these windows. Extract all. And scroll down and look for the setup file. I'm going to right click and choose run as administrator. You can change the drive path if you're putting it on an alternate disk. Now that the installation is complete, we want to add some users. We open up server manager, tools, computer management, System tools, local users and groups, expand users, new u right click a new user, <clears throat> call it RF user. I'm going to give it a password. I want to change it so that the user cannot change the password and the password never expires. I'm also going to create a, a user in case I want to use session administrator. We'll call it GS admin. Do the same with it. User cannot change password. The password never expires. Now, next, what we'll do is add users to the GWTN monitors group. I'm going to change location to the server since it's a local user. And I'm going to put in GS admin. Check name. Now, when you uh, set these permissions, in order for that user to be able to run Session Administrator, you must log out of Windows and then log back in. There's one more thing that we need to do before going into the configuration. We need to check to see if the users have Allow Log On Locally Rights. So we go to Control Panel, Administrative Tools, Local Security Policy, Local Policies, User rights assignments. Look for allow logon locally. Open it up. We see that users has the rights to log on locally, so there's no need to do anything else. If this was missing, you would need to add your users to this list that are going to be using Telnet to connect to the server. Doing OK. Clean up. Use the down arrow. I'm going to find the Georgia Softworks information. I'm going to right click and choose open file location. This just makes it easier for managing. So we're going to do some UTS configuration tool. We're going to expand UTS configuration, global per system, active configuration. And I want to set up automatic log on for testing. We'll use the local loopback address. Use 
is a period for to represent a domain placeholder. Username. And the password. We'll save the file. We will also, we may want to test some third party clients. So we'll open up the one for third party clients. And normally you could just use, if you were only using this file, you could use a star space dot space and then put in the username and password. But because we're using the local loopback address in the other uh, GS underscore auto for Georgia Softworks clients, here we'll need to put in uh, something to make sure that they're not having overlapping addresses. So we'll put in 192.star.star.star. So next, we want to add a default configuration. So we'll right click on users per session, create default. We'll expand default, we'll go to emulation, we'll select uh, VT220, we'll select UTF-8, we'll say yes to color, we'll click apply. Then Power failure and detection. I want to enable session saver. I'm going to use user ID and IP address. To, I want to set 60 minutes for the reconnect wait time. We'll click apply. We'll get a logon script. And we will want to add an application so that uh, our K underscore start will launch an application for us. So I want to get the path to the application. And in my case, I'm going to use far. And because there's a space in the file name, you need to put this in quotes. We like to verify that this command will actually work. So we're going to copy. I'm going to come back to the desktop. And here you can just start typing in CMD. And you'll see it come up. You can right click. You can run it as administrator. I don't think you need to. But we'll do it. We'll paste this in here. And it should launch far when we use that command in the K underscore start file. And it does. So we know our command works. So we can close after saving. And next, we'll want to create some users. So the user that we had created earlier, we want to add it to local user group. And when we check it, you can see that it it inherited the default configuration setting. Now, what if we want to have a domain user? We right click on domains, choose add domain, put a domain name in, expand, right click on the domain name, add user, and we add the user. And when we check it, you can also see that it has inherited the default configuration settings. Next, we want to do some testing. So we're going to close this. And normally, we would be able to just right click this on many systems and be able to go in and edit it. We're going to have to do this a little differently. We're going to launch Notepad. We're going to right click Notepad, choose Run as Administrator. And we're going to open that file. We're going to change this from text only, include all files. And we're going to scroll down. It 
select the batch file, open it, and here we're going to add the dash A for automatic logon, the dash H, and then the loopback address. File, save. Now one of the things that we have already done is add users to the GWTN monitors group and because you would need to log out and log back in you would normally do that at this time before launching session administrator and in this case we've already done that so we're going to launch session administrator and as you can see it started now we're going to test to see if when we launch our telnet client if it is able to start and it successfully launched the application, as you can see. Now, when you're looking at this, uh, if you have a more users selected when it's highlighted like this, if you hit the Enter key, it'll let you monitor the connection. And then if you're changing views or anything inside, or if the screen changes, you'll be able to uh, uh, see the changes while monitoring. To get out of monitoring, just hit Escape key, and it returns you back. You can also shadow sessions. You can terminate a session. You can get details on a session. Now, one of the things with uh, the Telnet server, when you're using a K underscore start dot bat file, when you quit a session or you quit the application, it will leave the Telnet session open. And as you can see, the Telnet stayed open. So we're going to sh show you what, how, how to change that. Or open up the UTS configuration tool, go to the user's logon script, and allow the session to terminate when the application exits. And you see it's a K underscore start when you click apply, it changes it to C underscore start. A K underscore start will keep the file open after the application closes. A C underscore start will close the file after an application closes. So we're just going to exit out of this to close this telnet session. Control Z gets you out of the shadow mode. And then we'll just exit down here. We're going to launch the session again. And we're going to change the view. So with the view uh, changed, I want you to see how Session Saver works. To simulate a network drop from a wireless client it's on the floor. We're just going to click this red X and it should call it, which will close the telnet session and should simulate an abnormal disconnect and cause the, the session to go suspended. And as you can see, it is suspended. Now, if you notice that it was on a different screen than the normal one when you launch, it should come back to the same screen it was on when it was disconnected. And as you can see, it did. So what, the last thing to demonstrate is now that you're running an application, you can
quit the application and it'll close the telnet session for you because of the c underscore start dot bat and as you can see the telnet session is gone and it was disconnecting well that concludes this installation of georgia softworks universal terminal server on a windows server 2012 thank you for watching bye bye